morning, everyone. Welcome to the 11 o'clock Protestant service. Please stand with us as we worship God. Whatever your posture of worship is, please do that. Raise your hand, jump up and down, whatever. We will feel about strong and mighty fortress. Raise your voice now. Our love is greater. Who can stand against us if our God is for us? Sing with joy now. Our God is for us. The Father's love is a strong and mighty fortress. Raise your voice now. No love is greater. Who can stand against if our God is for us, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. You got some praise. We love you, God. Good morning and welcome. I greet you all in the name of the living and loving Lord. Our call to worship this morning comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall they teach, no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel 
and bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh, oh, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh, my soul, I worship Your holy name. Yes, Lord, the sun. God, love you. Always worship your name. Your love is important, like a ring 
of solid gold, like a violet's nested, like a golden of old. Your love is enduring through the winter rain and beyond the horizon. Mercy for today, faithful you have been, and faithful you will be. Yourself to me, and it's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips. Never be on my lips. You father the orphan, your kindness makes us whole. You shoulder the weakness, and your strength becomes our own. You're making me like you, clothing me in white, bringing beauty from ashes. But you will have your bride, free of all her guilt, rid of all her shame, known by her true name. And it's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. You will be praised, you will be praised with angels and saints. So we sing worthy are you, Lord. And you will be praised. And you will be praised. Angels and saints, we sing worthy are you, Lord. And you will be praised. You will be praised. Angels and saints, we sing worthy. Sing your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will never be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Hallelujah. Assembly may be seated. Um, and at this time, well, let me ask the kiddos, let me ask the young uh, kids here. Who was at the trunk or treat last night, the kids? Oh, <laughs> quite a few of you. Was it fun? Yeah? Well, we have something even more fun for you right now. Um, if you can imagine that, it is a special joint Sunday school class. The pre-K and K and grades one through four will all be together in room 15, uh, led by Corey and Ashley Geiger. So I'm going to invite all the children. We're going to dismiss the children for Sunday school um, and send them off to a super fun, wonderful, um, special Sunday school day. And we know they will all behave and have fun. You can see how excited they are. <laughs> and now at this time, our service will continue with the reading of the lessons.
A reading from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Here ends the reading. And our second reading, can you hear me? Uh, which is also my sermon text. I think you'll see why in a moment. It is not from one of the Gospels today, but it is from Paul's letter to the Romans, the third chapter. Now, we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. And here ends the reading. <clears throat> Today is a day that many Protestant churches around the world observe as Reformation Sunday. Uh, you might notice on the front page of the bulletin there, you have uh, that picture of a man uh, with his tonsure hairstyle uh, nailing a document to the wall. You might remember from history class many years ago that that is Martin Luther uh, nailing his 95 theses um, to the church door in Wittenberg, Germany. I'll come to that in just a moment, but I wanted to say before we begin that today is not a day to um, bash our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters. Um, As we look back on the history of church, of the church, there's always mistakes that are made. Um, Just like when we look back on the history of the United States, people did not always get it right. And from time to time, we have to make changes, we have to make adjustments uh, to correct the ways we have gotten off course um, and to see where we're going in the future. And that's today what we observe on Reformation Sunday. Um, And so again, not not a day to um, sort of pick on our Catholic brothers and sisters, but 
I want to take you back a little bit. Um, today is partially a history lesson, but also a proclamation of the good news as well. But I want you to imagine for a moment what it would have been like to live 500 years ago. Um, if you're like me, when we have those um, temporary power outages for a couple hours, you're like, oh my goodness, I'm back in the dark ages. We can hardly survive without our electric devices. But just imagine what life was really like 500 years ago. Um, if you made it to age 50, you were considered to be very, very old. But most likely you spent your whole life in the same town or village. You would be born, grow up, live and die in the same place. Most people did not travel more than 50 miles away from the place they were born. Uh, back 500 years ago, most likely you couldn't read or write since only about 5% of the population was literate. Was literate. And in that time, the Roman Catholic Church was the only kind of denomination, as we might think of it. Um, 500 years before, the church had split between the Eastern Orthodox and the Roman Catholic. But in most of the world, those were just the only churches that were there. Um, so those who preached or taught contrary to the official church could be called heretics. They were often silenced and persecuted, and in extreme cases, they could even be put to death. So probably you only attended one church in your whole life, the church in your town or village. And the Bible that your priest would use in that church was a, La a Latin Bible, which you cannot understand. And in fact, the entire church service was in Latin. Your priest is probably reading the Bible in Latin, which again, you couldn't understand, but your whole knowledge of the Bible comes from that one priest, uh, from his interpretation and teaching, the only other knowledge people had of the Bible was likely the stained glass windows that they would see on, uh, at their church. So into that world uh, was born a man named Martin Luther. Uh, he was born on November 10th, 1483. I know with the devil dogs, November 10th, as you enjoy the Marine Corps birthday, it's also Martin Luther's birthday. Uh, but he was born into a family that was certainly not wealthy by any means, but uh, they weren't poor either. His father was a lease. Uh, he had uh, several mines that he leased, and uh, so they were a family of some means. And young Martin's father wanted him to become a lawyer. So at the age of 17, he sent his son to school to study law. Um, and on Martin's way home from school once, this is during one of the breaks, he found himself in the midst of a terrible thunderstorm. Uh, there was lightning crashing all around him. The rain was beating down on him and the wind, and he thought he might die. And so young Martin, 17 years old, got down on his knees and he prayed, Saint Anne, save me and I will become a monk. And true to his word, he was spared from the storm and he became a monk. He, he entered the order of Saint Augustine and became an Augustinian monk. So much to his father's disappointment, young Martin left for the monastery where he spent most of his time performing simple tasks like gardening and working in prayer, fasting, and attending worship services up to five to seven times a day. And by all accounts, uh, Luther was a good monk, but the young man found himself in a state of spiritual despair. Um, it seemed that no matter how hard he prayed, no matter how much he fasted, um, no matter what he did, he always felt that he was not good enough to earn God's favor, to earn God's love. And of course, in those days, people thought about God very differently. Um, the most popular religious painting of Jesus during the Middle Ages showed Christ as a judge sitting on a rainbow, and in one hand, Jesus had a sword, and the other hand, he had a lily. And below Jesus, the evil people were being pulled into the fires of hell, and the good people were going up to heaven. That's how, that's how most people thought about Jesus in the Middle Ages, that he was a judge, not a savior. So no wonder Luther was terrified and unsettled. But when nothing he did seemed to help, Luther turned to the saints, um, it was widely believed in those days that the saints of God had been so good that they accumulated a surplus of good works. So if you were a sinner, you could pray to certain saints and receive from their treasury the extra good works that they had done. 
and that that would put you right with God. So first, Luther looked to the Virgin Mary. He looked to Saint Anne for aid, but they seemed to also offer no help. But later, Luther, as he read the Bible more and more deeply, he began to believe that no human being has any extra goodness to give to anyone else. He also discovered that God alone could grant forgiveness. And Luther discovered that God does grant forgiveness, that through Jesus, uh, by what Jesus has done on the cross, um, we are forgiven through faith. Um, Luther was especially moved by the words of Paul uh, when he read what Paul wrote, that the just shall live by faith. Trust God, the Bible was telling Luther, and his love will come to you. We do not need to worry about pleasing God because he forgives us and loves us in spite of who we are. So during this time, as Luther was, was making these discoveries, a powerful bishop named Albert of Brandenburg wanted to get promoted to a higher rank within the church, right? But for this to happen, Albert had to come up with a huge sum of money to secure this new position. He had to come up with 10,000 gold coins to buy the office. This money would go towards building a new church in Rome. It's a church you can still visit today, the largest church in the world, St. Peter's Cathedral. The problem was that Albert did not have the 10,000 gold coins he needed, but thankfully the Pope had a solution. He authorized Albert to begin selling indulgences, which were paper certificates that said your sins were forgiven. If you bought an, if you bought an indulgence, you were guaranteed to go to heaven. So Bishop Albert employed a man named Johann Tetzel to actually sell the indulgences. Tetzel was like the Don Draper of his day. If you like Mad Men, he was an advertising genius and he began selling indulgences all across Germany. By now, Luther had left the monastic life and he was serving as a pastor and professor of the Bible in the small university town of Wittenberg, Germany. And people in Luther's town were taking their money to go buy these indulgences. And Tetzel even had a clever, uh, a clever um, jingle he told people that as soon as the coin in the coffer box rings, the soul from purgatory springs. And when Luther heard this, he was furious because when he read the Bible, he found no mention of purgatory and he found nothing to suggest that the buying and selling of forgiveness was okay. Privately, Luther ranted to his colleagues that this could not be done, the church could not do this, that money couldn't be used to buy forgiveness of sins. And so on the day before All Saints Day, which was October 31st in the year 1517, Luther marched over to the cathedral in Wittenberg and there on the great wooden door, uh, which was also sort of like the community bulletin board, Luther nailed 95 theses, which, are, which were 95 sort of points for debate, to the church door. And his intention was to encourage a robust academic debate on the selling of indulgences and other issues affecting the church. But something very unexpected happened, which is that people copied down Luther's 95 theses and used a newfangled invention to duplicate them and spread them all across Europe. That invention, of course, was the printing press, which had just recently been invented. So in today's terminology, we would say that Luther's ideas went viral, and overnight, his 95 theses spread all across Europe. So of course, the reaction was, was predictable. Uh, Bishop Albert was angry, and the Pope was furious. Though leaders of the church were clearly shocked at his remarks, Luke, Luther quickly became a hero all over Germany. Some admired him simply because they were proud of a German priest standing up to an Italian pope, but others were tired of seeing poor peasants using their hard-earned money to build a magnificent cathedral in Rome. And Luther used to always say that the, the ch uh, church of St. Peter's in Rome was built off the backs of the German poor. 
while other people simply believed that his calls for reform were greatly overdue. A couple years later in 1521, in the city of Worms in Germany, Luther was ordered to appear before the powers of the church and the powers of the government to take back what he had said. They told him that he must recant everything he had said and written or he would be excommunicated from the church, thereby sentenced to hell and all kinds of other things. But there in front of all the powers of church and state, Luther stood up and said, my conscience is captive to the word of God. I will not take back anything for to go against conscience is neither honest nor safe. Here I stand, I cannot do otherwise. God help me. So of course, Luther was excommunicated from the church, making him a criminal. Anyone, anyone was free to kill him and in doing so become a hero. There was a bounty on his head. And on his way home back from this trial, he was captured, he was kidnapped by a group of hooded men on horseback. He thought he was soon to be executed, but as it turned out, these men were friendly. They had come on behalf of the ruler of Luther's land where he lived, a man named Frederick the Wise, who wanted to make sure that Luther was safe. They took him to a castle called the Wartburg Castle, you can still go there today, to hide out and to live until things became safer. Luther lived there under a safe, uh, under a false identity, and uh, during this time in hiding, he translated the New Testament into German for the first time. This was the first time in history that the entire New Testament had been translated into the language of the people. And in the year 1522, Luther released his translation. It was in September of that year. So last month, September of 2022, marked the 500th anniversary of the entire New Testament being translated into the language of the people. It would not be a couple years later until 1534 that Luther completed his translation of the Old Testament, finally putting the entire Bible into the hands of the people. After he finished his New Testament translation, Luther returned to Wittenberg, and contrary to the prevailing opinion of the time, which claimed that for a person to be a, a priest or a pastor, um, to be any kind of holy person, they must be celibate. And Luther taught that this was not true. And so he got married to a woman named Katharina von Bora, who had been a former nun. Uh, together they had six children, they lived a very happy life. Um, Katarina was a very savvy businesswoman. So while Luther spent all of his time writing and uh, doing kind of church matters, um, she raised their six children and also was uh, brewed beer, uh, which Luther liked a little, a little bit uh, to enjoy every now and then. And they also rented out rooms in their home to university students to help make ends meet. Luther had no desire to split the church but it did split. He always hoped that he could change the church from within, that he could reform the church. For this reason, people call it the period in which Luther lived and following the Reformation. Those who followed him, those who protested the errors of the church were, so, were soon called Protestants or Protestants. During the early years following Luther's excommunication, changes did take place. Worship changed from Latin to German, at least in the Protestant churches, and a great emphasis on singing in the congregation developed using German folk tunes. Also, the sacraments were reduced from seven until, uh, to two, baptism and communion, and people were allowed to have both the bread and the wine rather than just the bread during communion. Luther wrote many hymns. He wrote many teaching materials to teach the people the basics of the Christian faith. And in general, he shaped the church for hundreds of years to come. And today, there are hundreds of millions of Protestant Christians all around the world, including Lutherans, Anglicans, Calvinists, Presbyterians, Reformed, Methodists, Baptists, Pentecostals, and of course, non-denominational non Christians just to name a few. And in case you're wondering, I'd like to quickly share with you the story of how one very famous American Christian 
became known as Martin Luther King Jr. This was not the name he was born with. Uh, MLK was first named Michael King Jr. after his father, Michael King Sr., who was also a minister. King Sr. was the pastor at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia, when in 1934, King Sr. traveled to Germany for a meeting of the Baptist World Alliance, which I still believe meets every four to six years. And so while King Sr. was visiting sites that were associated with Luther and the Reformation, he was so moved by what Luther had done that he changed his name to Martin Luther King Sr. and he began calling his son Martin Luther King Jr. So now you know how our beloved um, Martin Luther King Jr. got that name. It was also during this conference in 1934 where King Sr. and others witnessed the rise of Nazism. During that 1904 convention, the Baptist World Alliance issued a resolution condemning anti-Semitism and King Sr. gained a deep appreciation for Luther's belief in protest. So now that you know a little bit about how we all got to be here today as Protestant Christians, what I would like to leave you with is this, is that the Holy Spirit is always at work changing the church to meet the needs, to meet the challenges that we face today. Um, as we all can see just by reading the newspaper, uh, the world continues to be broken. Uh, the world continues to be filled with suffering and pain, uh, division um, and hatred. And it is into this world that God sends the church. God sends each one of us to be like Christ, uh, to be the hands of Jesus in the world. And so we rejoice and we celebrate today that the Holy Spirit is always pushing us, always leading us. We can look back to see where the church has been in the past. We can look back to see some of the mistakes that the church has made along the way. But we also can rejoice and look forward to the future with hope, knowing that God is always with us and God is always leading us. So brothers and sisters, um, I invite you to uh, take a little time every day, um, now that we have the chance, the opportunity to do something that many Christians never had the chance to do, which is to read the Bible in our own language, uh, something we can be thankful to Martin Luther um, for for, for paving the way 500 years ago to give us all that privilege and opportunity. I wish you all a blessed week. May God bless you all. Amen. <clears throat> and now, I will invite you, if you are able, to please rise. And our service will continue with the prayers of the church. Before I begin, does anyone have any special prayer requests for today? A special concern or um, of, of individual that anyone would like to be prayed for or any, any good news to share? Okay, well we will have in just a moment a time to pray as the Spirit moves us. After each petition I will say, hear us, O God, and I ask you to respond, your mercy is great. Let us pray. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all God's creation. God, our fortress, we pray for the church in every place. Write your law of love on the hearts of all Christians, of every denomination and tradition, that we may remain steadfast in our witness to your grace. Hear us, O God. God, our liberator, we pray for your creation. Bring new life to overused land and contaminated rivers. Reform and reorient our relationship with the environment that we faithfully care for all that you have made. Teach us to tread lightly on the earth using no more than what we need for each day. Hear us, O oh God. 
your mercy is great. O God, our refuge and strength, we pray for the nations. Where they are in an uproar, bring wise leadership and comfort to those in distress. Make wars to cease and peace to enter every land. We pray especially for the people of Haiti and we pray for peace in Ukraine. Hear us, O God. God, our protector, we pray for the entire Guantanamo Bay community. Give strength and determination to all of our security forces, watchstanders, and uniformed personnel. Bless and uphold all the civilians whose tireless efforts, efforts keep this base running smoothly. Comfort those who are separated from loved ones or homesick. Safeguard and guide our protected migrant neighbors as they seek safety and dignity. Hear us, O God. God, our very present help in trouble, we pray for those in need. Shelter any without homes, especially those still recovering from hurricanes. Help the poor and all who are struggling financially. Give comfort and hope to all who are facing illness, surgery, or a new diagnosis. Hear us, O God. God, our Redeemer, we pray for this assembly. Bless all who are striving to follow Christ more faithfully, especially the young adults of our youth group. We thank you for all of our faithful volunteers, including the worship team, our audiovisual experts, ushers, and all Sunday school teachers. Hear us, O God. Jesus said, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Trusting his invitation, at this time I invite the assembly to pray for any other people, concerns, or thanksgivings, either by saying them out loud or in the silence of our hearts. And let us have just a brief moment of silence. Hear us, O God. God, our stronghold, we give thanks for those who have gone before us in faith and who now rest from their labors. Gather all the faithful departed around your heavenly throne. Comfort those who grieve the deaths of loved ones and fill them with sure and certain trust in your promise of the resurrection. Renew and reform us as we strive to continue in your word. Hear us, O God. With faithful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, let us pray uh, using the words that Jesus has taught us in whichever version we are most familiar. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. The assembly may be seated. Uh, at this time, I will invite our ushers forward. Thank you. Um, and I do have a couple announcements uh, while the ushers are collecting the offering. Uh, the first is that you might have noticed in the bulletin, uh, but hard to believe that Christmas is just around the corner. If we were back on the mainland, um, everything would be switching over to Christmas in the stores right now, <laughs> right? So I'm glad uh, we, we don't have quite so much of that here. Um, but we are planning a Christmas cantata, very similar to the one that we had last year, uh, if you were here then. So we are looking for musicians or people who might be interested in participating. Um, anyone is welcome to join us. The idea is that all the different faith groups on base 
Um, we'll, we'll contribute one or two songs and we'll have uh, Bible readings and fellowship. So uh, please um, consider if you might be called to do that and keep your ears open as we develop plans for the Christmas cantata. Also, just keep in mind that this year Christmas Eve is a Saturday and Christmas Eve is a Sunday, or Christmas Day is a Sunday. So it happens every so many years, but just wanted to make you aware of that. Also, I want to thank everyone who contributes uh, to the Religious Offering Fund. I know many people uh, contribute to churches at home um, and other charities, which is great, uh, but that money to, to the Religious Offering Fund goes to all kinds of different things. Uh, so for example, this coming week, I uh, will be buying um, snacks and supplies for the youth group that meets on Wednesday evenings. Is Anastasia here this morning? I'm not sure if she's here or not, I don't think so. Uh, Anastasia recently was so excited, our youth group leader, she told me that she had 17 uh, young, young people that were interested in learning more about uh, Jesus and faith. And um, so we'll be buying snacks and supplies from them which come from the ROF. So thank you to everyone who, who gives uh, to that. And then lastly, um, some of you might have noticed that uh, at the end of church every Sunday, I have a habit of barricading the door because I like to shake hands and talk to people. Uh, my, my poor family knows that wherever I go, I like to talk to everyone. But uh, this week, just to try something different, I'll stand at the first door. And I know people are in a hurry sometimes to, to go uh, to other appointments. So I won't take it personal if you don't want to shake my hand. <laughs> and you may feel free to use the side doors. Uh, but I'll be standing right here in the back. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. Any other announcements or, or news that anyone would like to share? Well, I did want to um, just let everybody know, as you can see, the drums are empty most Sundays. We have one bass player and we have one acoustic uh, guitar player. We have a few vocalists. We have a pianist who is going to be leaving here in a month. All that being said, if you feel like you would love to come up here, if you're being spirit-led, uh, this is an amazing experience. Uh, just a lot of us up here, this is the first time that we've done this, and it's just, you know, w words really can't describe the um, being up here and leading worship, really honing your skills. So if you can play any of those instruments, uh, if you are skilled vocally, uh, please just let me know. My name is Jeremy, uh, or the pastor, and we'd love to get you up here on Sundays. We practice on Wednesday evenings at 1800, also if you're interested. Thank you. <laughs> Any other announcements? Okay. <laughs>
Amen. Father God, oh, we just come to you now in this time of prayer. Oh, we love you so much. We thank you so much for everything. Uh, Lord, another week uh, where you've just shown your greatness. We're so thankful for that, Father God. Uh, we just pray that nobody leaves here today the same as they came, Father God. Uh, we thank you for everything you got us through the, this past week, everything you're going to get us through. Uh, we just uh, give you so much glory. We ask these things in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Gitmo 1100. Y'all are dismissed. Sins are washed in a grave called